and welcome back and a happy new year well actually it hasn't been that happy for me because i've been struggling with this serial wireless transmission and uh, yeah don't don't look at all these wires here let's look at this nice neat one over here because that's what it should have looked like all the way through hmm let's uh let's discuss this in more detail shall we now just a quick shout out for pcb way especially for beginners who perhaps have never done this before it really is simple once you get your head around it create your pcb design in your favorite cad program keycad or something like that and then get your gerber files ready and upload them when you click on this button here now the dimensions are not important just put 100 by 100 here put how many you want here remember it five dollars for 10 pieces so put in 10 and then click the quote now button but i want to talk to you about something else this week and that's about are you really going to solder smt components because they will do it for you for a very reasonable sum of 30 dollars but that includes your shipping so you sort of get it back don't you let's have a look what that means now this is the page you end up on when you specify how you want your board to be assembled okay and behind my head you can see that sign there look free shipping with this pc assembly so bear that in mind now here you say how am i going to source the components the best way is to let pcb way source them for you you just give them a list of the components you want in a standard you know spreadsheet format so you say i want these capacitors of this value in this size so for example you might say i want a 100 nanofarad capacitor 0603 and that's capacitor one and then capacitor two is something else and so on you just give them the entire list they'll go away and find them and believe me, components are cheap in China, so you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised at the cost. Now, having done all that, you specify down here um, whether you want through-hole components, uh, which side of the board you want soldered, either top, bottom, or both, and they'll just do the whole thing and send it back to you. It really is a nice way of getting a prototype to you back very quickly without having to get the soldering iron out. So, what are you waiting for? Have a go at PCB Way and try them out now. Yes, indeed. Now, I've got a goal of uh, getting the serial output from my, well, ESP32s in this case, but it could be Arduinos the same, um, out from whichever project they're in, you know, scattered around the workshop, outside, um, because I, something's gone wrong or it's not behaving quite the way you expect. You think, I wonder what debugging messages are coming out now that you've written into your sketch. Well, normally the only way to do it is by plugging in, yeah, a USB cable into the USB port and then plugging that the other end of that cable into your PC so you can see what's going on but I thought enough I'm fed up with cables having to be a plugged in so you've got to take the thing apart take the lid off and plug it in somehow if you can fit the cable in um, and then there's wires all over the floor and you trip over them I thought this is madness let's have a look at these serial wireless transmitters that of which there are quite a few out there now see what joy we can have with those yeah yeah joy yeah because there wasn't a lot of it but i suppose you've got to ask have i succeeded in doing what i want and the answer is yes in fact that one over there this one here look that one's working just fine i'll show you in a minute but uh these modules can do more and as you can see with this oh look at it just look at the mess of that you start off nice and neat that module there looks just the same as that one initially and i thought oh well we'll just add a few more wires because we can do more with it allegedly and no having spent the best part of a week now with various modules doing this that and the other i thought right let's just knock it on the head and admit defeat what's the expression uh, if at first you don't succeed try and try again but then give up no use being a damn fool about it okay so i'm giving up because i don't need any extra functionality that these modules can give you huh what's that what extra functionality you ask okay so apart from transmitting from the serial port wirelessly via this little this little aerial that may or may not be given to you as part of that module depends which seller you're going to um, as well as just transmitting the data across so it's it's effectively a wireless usb cable albeit running at 9600 board rate okay we'll come on to that later um it works um and in fact i'm going to give you a demo of that right now just to show you it works before we discuss what else these boards can allegedly do 
Right, here we have the two serial monitor windows on my PC, just to prove it all works. The right-hand one, as it says here, is RX set up completely. That's the receiver waiting to hear stuff from this device over here. Okay, that's not connected to my PC in any way, other than wirelessly via this little um, antenna. So I've got to switch the thing on first. Bing, it says. Now look, what you're seeing on the receiver now is what's being transmitted everything from that Arduino board behind this monitor screen here. In fact, we haven't even switched on that monitor yet, and we're receiving stuff as it would have been on the other um, device. So let's uh, just connect up, which will reset it, by the way. So we're connecting. There we are. So it's reset back to one. And everything that appeared over here, everything, including the TX setup complete, also appeared um, over here with the receiving device. Great. So that means, well, I suppose I've, I've proven at a stroke, really, that the Arduino with this little thing attached to it here is now transmitting to this receiving Arduino via well, that abomination of the receiver with all those wires attached. And I could now debug, if you like, or at least read the messages from the initiating Arduino. Job done, pack it away. What's, what's the problem? End of video. No, no, it's not quite that simple. There are some caveats and well disappointments along the way so let's let's address those let's take these monitor screens off shall we so if i'm transmitting wirelessly now from this arduino here to this one here and receiving the stuff here into this arduino and then displaying it on my screen um, what's the issue well first and foremost the transmission rate as i mentioned before was 9600 board all my sketches have the serial transmission rate set to 115200, you know, to get the things out there nice and quick. So you go, well, does it really matter? Well, in the scheme of things, maybe not. But I think, OK, the board allows me to change the board rate. Let's let's get the spelling right. So the, the module, not board, the module allows me to, to talk to it using AT commands. Yes, Hayes modem AT commands to say, change the board rate to this so you could set it up to 115200 or any of the other um, settings there is a caveat there though the faster the transmission rate the less the range of the transmission now me here in my workshop i mean i'm not really bothered about range as long as it manages to get about you know three meters i'm happy these ones these particular ones which are jdy 41s um, have about 100 meters clear sight range other ones though have a much longer range uh, let me show you some of those in just a minute but let's talk about this at command thing all these wires on here were designed so i could talk to it and the way you talk to this board is quite simple really let me show you the pin out so here's the little tiny module okay and on the reverse it's got all the uh, the pinouts marked I hope that's in focus. It's so tiny, my camera could get confused. So there we are. I think we can see that. Yeah, ground, CS, which stands for chip select, set, which is the important one, TXD, RXD, VCC. Fine. Now, these are 3.3 volt boards. That's fine, though, because the Arduino has a 3.3 volt supply on it, and it works just fine, as you saw. Um, and if, if you wire it up as I've got it wired up now, that's it. It's transparent. It runs at 9600 board. Everything that's transmitted gets received and displayed. End of. To set the module, though, this module that I'm holding in my hand here, to a different board rate, we have to use the AT command. And the way you do that is by setting the pin marked set low. When that set pin is low, this board here switches to AT mode, it stops receiving all the stuff and goes, oh, I'm in AT mode. Great, I'm, I'm waiting for some commands. And that's where the problem started. You have to send in the AT commands such as AT plus board to query what the current board rate is. Um, and it should respond with AT plus board equals 9600. 
except it doesn't. And I'll read it up and it goes, oh, you have to put on carriage return line feed at the end of every line. So I did. And then it still didn't work. So then I did, okay, line feed carriage return, bit of an odd sequence. No. No matter what I did, no matter what I did, I could not get this board to switch to AT mode. And believe me, I tried. And this seems to be a, a common problem. Anybody who's ever used one of the Bluetooth modules, HC05 or 06, will probably remember that they've got lights on those boards and you press certain buttons to set them into AT mode. So you can tell, yes, it is in AT mode. These ones, though, haven't got a single sausage on them. Nothing at all. I mean, look at the one over there that's running. There's no lights, nothing. And I guess they do that either through cheapness or because you can switch these these modules off by setting the CS pin high. Normally, you'd find the CS pin tied to the ground pin, as I've got it on my modules just underneath, just a solder blob, because you wouldn't ever want to disable this. It's, it's well... You want it running, except, of course, if you're running on battery power, you might not want it running all the time. So you would set the CS pin high through some circuitry and it switches off. Hmm. Doesn't help me, though, in getting it into AT mode. OK, let's just forget that one and go, OK, there's so little information on the JDY41 and 40 there's more information about the 40 admittedly but i don't know it sounds great on paper except when you're stuck and then i couldn't find basically any arduino type um, information about it at all let's have a quick look so here's a pdf all about the jdy 40 and the 41 looks identical to this pretty much um yeah so i thought okay well let's let's have a look at this and just see what there is going on now, there's the module there's all the pins we just looked at um what they do and all that is discovered is uh, described very much later on you've also got these eight gpio pins down the side which makes it quite useful or potentially makes it useful because the the transmitter side can set any one of those gpio pins to ground and over here these can go either high or low in the receiver side uh, without anything to do with this down here you just don't use the rxtx at all uh, couldn't get that to work either perhaps i've got some duff boards fake boards what do you think seems unlikely but who knows um right just a, a quick look then so here it is um the parameters for it and it's all pretty much standard anyway i'm going to leave this pdf underneath um the video description here and in my it'll be in my github where it actually is stored um, right, the final nail in the coffin for this one then, um, there's the drawing of the unit. Can you tell what it is just by looking at that? Yeah, yeah, you've spotted it. It's the two pin, it's the two pin spacing down here, two millimeter pin spacing, not 2.54, not breadboard friendly, which is why the one on my desk uh, looks a bit odd, actually. So this one here, if you notice, I've had to actually solder some wires on with some heat shrink just to get the things to fit and on this one and on this one here yeah this is the third one um i've actually soldered standard pin headers via little tiny wires to those things just to get the thing connected up it's basically a pain in the derriere something we don't need as hobbyists i mean obviously this is i think these must have been made for toys or something so that a toy can communicate with some other part of the toy to either you know set off sirens or noises or lights whatever something like that so the information is sparse and certainly not particularly hard to be no friendly anyway i'm going to leave you with that one and we'll look at a couple of others that i looked at right this is another one that i looked at that you can find on aliexpress like that but if you expect to find any documentation forget it right so this is what the module looks like pretty simple really and basically in principle pretty much what the other one was as well uh, that's an rt390 d01 that one um, same sort of arrangement on the back i've put my hand behind sort of focus let's turn it around 
So on the back, once again, we've got BCC, Ground, RX, TX. Yeah, and then you've also got some of these exposed pins on the side in much the same way as what we've already discussed. Once again, you should be able to set this into command mode to accept AT commands. As you can see, there's a thing there called command, CMD, which is why I've got this switch attached to it. Uh, and the one next to it is res for reset. And this has actually got uh, an LED on it, but it still didn't help me. Um, yes, I managed to put it into command mode, but then having set various commands, it was difficult then to get the thing to work reliably, if at all, using an Arduino. So I sort of gave up on that as well. So third and final one, what have I got? Right, stop the press. I've just been editing the video and I realised I did not show you um, how the AT commands would be interpreted by any of these modules. Um, well, should be interpreted by all the modules, but in fact, it was only this HC12 one that seems to work properly. Okay, so the, um, the set pin on the HC12 has been grounded, so this is now in AT mode. Okay, so on the screen there, you'll see the, um, the serial monitor for the FTDI. Now, the first thing you should do with any module that takes AT commands is to type in AT plus because that you're supposed to get back an OK. And if you got that, then you know you're communicating. So I'm going to type in AT plus down the bottom here of this um, call term window. So AT plus, it will be echoed on the screen. And hopefully, hopefully we get an OK back. Yay. So there we are. So you can see there's AT plus and OK that that Y at the front, that's just a bit of noise that was mucking about on there. Great, so that means the the HC12 could have been programmed now by an Arduino by bringing that set pin low on a GPIO, you do your board rate change and then you back it up again, you know, take the pin high and run it like that. Um, there's a few other commands. In fact, there's a good paper um, that lists all the commands of the HC12 because it's worth reading. Um, for example, what we can put in here is AT plus RX. That gives out all the details of the module as it's set now. So we can see that it says there, look, the board rate is 9600. The channel, receive channel, is 001. We're on plus 20 dBm for the uh, transmit power, which is ridiculously high. That should be reduced straight away. And the FU3 this is the default mode that it's set in. You can either have one, two, three. There might be a four, not sure. Um, anyway, it means that it's transparent um, serial transmission, board rate 9600, channel one. That FU3 is, is the standard as it comes out of the factory. But you can change that uh, if you know why you're changing it, of course. Um, one other thing you can have is the, the version of the software, AT plus V. And it goes, that's the version running on my HC12. Now, this exact setup I did on all three modules, and they just didn't respond. Um, we'll just do, I'll tell you what, just in case the, the stars have aligned and uh, the gods are shining on me, I'll plug another one in rather than the HC12, and we'll just see what happens compared to this. I won't touch anything else, I promise. Hmm, well that didn't work, did it? As soon as I connected that device to my FTDI in exactly the same way as the HC12, this is what I got. And in fact, not only this, there's other things coming up that aren't captured by this uh, software, basically saying that USB connections are now disappearing, my disk drive suddenly started disappearing and things like this. So I'm thinking, hmm, I'm thinking maybe that device is what's known technically as FUBAR which probably explains why I can't set it to AT mode. What do you think? Okay, so here we have um, a module that's known as the HC12. Yes, yes, that one. Very popular, lots of documentation for it. Um, works pretty much as um, other, the other two modules. So you can set um, various AT commands or use it just as a, a transparent transmitter, as we've already discussed. And that actually works pretty well. Um, it's got the same sort of um, pins on the back. There we are, look, set TXRX command of VCC, or ground of VCC. So it's pretty much the same. Um, these are cheap and come with an aerial, this aerial that uh, came with it. 
But these these aerials, by the way, four three three megahertz, I believe, aren't they? Um, these are cheap. You can get them from ESP ESP thirty twos as well. You can either get the proper ones that screw into um, cabinets and, and cases, all these little things, or stick on ones, which I've got plenty of. That one at the back there. That, no, that's not a stick on one. Okay. Now the HC twelve. Don't please don't confuse that with the HC O five and O six. It's got zero, nothing, nada, rien to do with Bluetooth. Right? It is not a Bluetooth module. No, it's a wireless serial transmitter with added capabilities, such as being able to set the board rate and the channel and stuff like that. So this one worked best of all, mainly because there's so much more information out there and example programs. So I'll put a couple of these, um, well, the programs that I've found for this underneath the video description, but they all look pretty much like the following. So this is the code and this is the entire program for the transmitter. Um, basically, it basically says set the serial monitor up for 9600 board. Yeah, they're all that is default. And then um, send stuff out, really. So every serial.print comes out of the serial.print to which you connect the HC12 or the any of the other modules, and it sends it out. Now, word of warning. Because we're using the transmitter pin of the Arduino or ESP32 or whatever, to send stuff out, that's absolutely fine and will not impact you uploading code via the USB, should you ever want to, sometime in the future. So you can have the two running side by side. That's not a problem. If, however, you do connect the receive pin on the Arduino or ESP32, that will most definitely upset the USB interface on that board and you can't do it. It depends whether you're trying to send stuff back into um, the module or not so if you look up look at the one on my desktop this one here is only transmitting out it's not receiving anything yeah which is why that pin there is into the tx pin of the arduino as soon as i put anything into the rx though from here it stops the usb port working 100 percent that depends, of course, whether you're trying to send stuff back into the Arduino or whether you're just prepared to send stuff out. Once again, that's exactly what I'm doing, isn't it? I've got my little project or screwed to the wall. I'm just sending stuff out. I'm not really expecting to send stuff back into it. For what purpose? Now, those those days are long gone. Yeah, If I was going to send stuff back into the ESP32 or Arduino, whatever it is I'm using, that would have been done on the workbench as I'm developing and building it. This is purely... From my point of view from debugging but it's a caveat you have to watch out right back to the the code the super complicated code so that's just sending stuff out okay so in that case what about the receiving device now the receiving device is under my control isn't it because it's sitting here on the workbench and in fact strictly speaking i don't even need an arduino but we probably will use something like that simply because it will be a, a boxed up self-contained solution then. So let's have a look at the receiver code. So here we have the receiver code. Now, what we're using here is software serial. Now this library is, I think it's part now of the Arduino standard library set. Oh, by the way, before I forget, the Arduino 2.0 IDE um, has been re-released. It's now 2.0 i believe um this is in january 2023 so if you haven't got it yet please go and get it it's so much better than the standard ide and it's got some little bug fixes and tweaks compared to the ide 2.0 um, version one and all that okay so definitely go and get it anyway software serial it's pretty much part of the standard arduino set now um, so all you do is say, right, I want my serial, an extra serial port, basically, both RX and TX, to appear on pins of your choice. I've chosen 9 and 11 here. Now, if you're using something like a Mega, though, um, 2560, then you don't need to do that because you've got several UARTs already. So you could plug in your receiving wireless device into a different UART pin set. 
But for those of us who have only got the one UART that is connected to the USB port, this is the way to do it. Software serial into any two um, pins you want. And really, it's the RX that you're interested in, 9. Although I've said 11 here for the TX, um, I ended up not using it. So now here, just to make it absolutely clear, look, my local, on the actual board itself, my local serial is running at 115200. But that's got nothing to do with the wireless speed. I'm saying, no, my software serial, this one here, is still running at 9600. Um, all this stuff here that I've commented out was me trying to get the AT commands to work and respond with that very first module I've given up. So I'm not even going to show it to you. So it sets up the serial speeds for both bits of the board now. And then in the loop, it just says, whatever you lis listen to, whatever you can hear on that wireless module coming down the software serial receive pin, write it out. And that's it. That That's all it does. And it just works so wonderfully well. I think, Do you know what? Simple is best. So from my point of view, all I'm going to do now is change the board rate from, say, my, my barrel pond um, code. Change the board rate back from 115200 to 9600, which is all a bit pedestrian. But it will work. Connect it up to some receiving Arduino. Well, in fact, that one that's sitting on my desk would work. And it would just just be great. So I'm thinking, OK, I've achieved what I want to achieve. What I haven't achieved is getting those boards to do anything else. So I'm sort of hoping, I'm sort of hoping that somebody out there in Arduino land has done this more successfully than me, whether it's an HC12 or a JDY40 or 41 or that other weird one with a weird number that I can find zero documentation for. Yeah, I know. Caveat emptor and all that. I should have looked it up first, shouldn't I, before I bought it from uh, from AliExpress. Anyway, overall then, if you're just looking for a serial wireless connector, th this could be it. Or an HC12. Um, I'll probably end up continuing to use this one for a bit because I've got four or five of them. And uh, that means I can just build them in to my project. As I say, the problem is with the two millimeter pin spacing. And if that annoys me enough, I'll think, right, just forget it. Use the HC12, and then I can potentially up the board rate by using the AT commands, which do work on the HC12. And uh, they're just easier to use. But at the end of the day, it's all a bit behind the scenes, isn't it? I'm hoping that um, you'll take some of the notes i'm going to put lots of information up on my github now and the way there'll be links in my video description down there yeah to the github which is up there in the cloud and the way you download sketches and all that is just to say code download it'll come down in a zipped format you unzip it and you've got everything there we are on your pc exactly as it is in the github itself and you can do what you want with it at that point you know, put it into sketches or libraries or just read the PDFs or whatever. That's the way to use it best. OK, I'm going to call a halt there. If you've got any suggestions on how to get these AT commands working on any of these modules properly and better, reliably, I should say, uh, do put them in the comments below. Yeah, it's always good to hear. Um, if you think the serial wireless thing is a good idea or you've used it already or you think why bother great tell me because it's always useful to know what the feedback is on that score and if you liked it and thought oh, this was this was fairly interesting go and, go and give me a like yeah because uh, i want the hey. yeah that's right that's the one i want because that's good and youtube gives it to more or offers it to more viewers then which obviously helps this channel and don't forget if you like it subscribe and tick the bell if you don't tick the bell you won't hear from me even if you've described yeah so it's a two-stage process we can't get around that and i'll just say happy new year and see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching